One of the key areas for any enterprise business is their ability to provide for their customers. I speak a lot on this channel about the need for more and more compute. Developing hardware using the latest technical advances to make the compute happen in record time. The problem is, that's only half the story, or even less. When it comes down to AI solutions, specifically those that require large quantities of data and large quantities of compute, you have to be able to manage it all from start to end, or as Mike Clark from AMD affectionately put it, from soup to nuts. As an end user building AI models, you need not only to understand the underlying hardware to work well, but innovations in AI are happening on the software side faster than anyone can seemingly predict. This is becoming more and more difficult as we approach data sizes for training in the petabytes, requiring thousands of exflops of compute. Joining me today is Dr. Talia Gershon, Director of Hybrid Cloud Infrastructure Research here at IBM, and we're going to talk today about the importance of having a solution that covers not only the base compute, but how you manipulate that data in a full stack solution. <laughs> So Talia, welcome to the channel. Good Thanks to see so you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. So to start off, I've got a very stupid question to start, <laughs> right? So from a research perspective, just how fast paced is the machine learning ecosystem today? It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's really exciting. I think over the last five or so years, just the rate and pace of technology evolution in the space of AI has been huge. The models themselves, the software that's used right, to develop the models, train them, deploy them, tremendous progress there. And also, of course, the computing uh, technologies that have come online, just tremendous rate and pace of innovation across the, across the board. So every time when I speak about AI hardware, I mainly focus on the compute, right? That's, that's where my specialty is. And you know, there's some talk about memory bandwidth and ingest, and everybody likes to talk about operations per second or operations per watt. Um, but we had a chat earlier, and that's not the whole story. Yeah, it's an important part of the story, especially, right? You see these, these charts, and people talk about you know, how many flops it takes, and the model parameter sizes are just blowing up. So obviously, there's a huge dimension of the model training, for example, that's very compute intensive. But when you think about actually building AI models and using them for something, some kind of productive use case, there's a whole workflow that starts from the data, right? Collecting the data, pre-processing the data, removing hate, removing abuse, removing <laughs> profanity, right? Yep. Um, you have multiple copies of the data, deduplicating, right? So there's a whole flow, workflow around data preparation. And then, of course, we do the distributed training steps, which are super compute intensive. And then there's the whole steps around adjusting the model, adapting it, actually checking that the model performs well against all of the metrics that you use, and then ultimately getting it into production. And if you look at that whole workflow, um, there's tremendous opportunity for innovation um, and productivity boosters across that whole life cycle. So g given that I focus on compute and you know, we speak about supercomputers and taking you know, weeks and weeks and weeks to train a model, is that still most of the time spent in that sort of end-to-end -end solution or, <laughs> or, or, or are we sort of arm dolls lowering it quite as supercomputers get faster? It means everything else becomes more of, of a part of that timeline. Yeah, I think depending on who you ask, there's a whole spectrum of answers you'll get uh, to that question. And so there's a today state and then there's a future state. And people are also on a different, a different part of the, the adoptance, you know, adopting curve right there. I think we're witnessing an opportunity for a real transformation in the way that people actually productively build and get AI into production. Um, you know, I'll give you an example of how we used to do things, right? We used to kind of, you know, the data would be in the cloud. We'd have to pull the data into more of like a traditional HPC-like environment, bare metal systems, um, you know, high-performance file systems and things like the schedulers. And we used to do some of the training in that environment and then have to pull that model back into production and run all, all kinds of checks. And every time you cross these security boundaries, I pull the model someplace, I, I do the training, I try to get the model someplace else. There's time spent kind of complying. Every time you, you go from a cloud native environment to a traditional HPC environment and back, there's all kinds of productivity losses um, associated with, with all those transitions. And of course, the rate and pace of innovation in the software community is also extremely rapid, right? So people are developing new libraries that you could productively use to do your work, but if they're not supported in your traditional HPC environment, then you're sort of stuck. So we're really at an inflection point where um, some of those productivity losses that happen because we're doing things um, in more of a traditional way, not adopting some of what's possible with cloud native technologies, we're seeing really the opportunity to modernize um, the way we do AI and HPC. So 
you're here at IBM working on you know, the cloud infrastructure research. If you're not focusing on compute, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. So it's focusing on all the other things that eat into an AI researcher and AI developer's productivity. Um, you know, I, we were talking earlier, we were saying, you know, typically people think about, well, the power of my supercomputer <laughs> equals my productivity as an AI researcher, yep. and that's missing some really important parts. All of those steps in the workflow of data preparation, today, many of those steps are executed manually. All of the steps in the, you know, fine-tuning the model for a downstream task or checking the model against many, many hundreds of um, checks that you have to do before you actually use that model productively divide and conquer amongst multiple teams manually, right? And we're seeing the emergence of tools, open source tools that you can use, that people can adopt, that dramatically speed up um, AI researcher productivity. Tools like Ray, tools like PyTorch, being able to package those in a consistent way, in a container, mm -hmm. right? In a consistent way, um, and run it in an environment that's flexible, portable, right? Um, we're talking about how we ourselves have transformed the way we do AI research at IBM Research. We ourselves have adopted a cloud-native research yep. flow, right? Ray, PyTorch, developing on OpenShift in our own environments, in our cloud. And then, you know, when we work with different customers that have made different choices about which clouds they run on, bringing that same stack to other clouds. So really, again, modernizing um, the way we do our work, portable, flexible, agile. Right. So, so, so that's, I guess, what you call full stack. Yeah. Right. Going from all the way from hardware through to software and then back out the other end when the data needs to be post-processed. Yeah. Co-designing every part of the infrastructure, the software, and the tools, and the platform that we use. So, you know, we know we want to do AI. You know, found, mm -hmm. foundation models research is a space that we've talked a lot about as well. We know we're trying to build next generation AI models, and we know we want to move fast. So one element and dimension of that is infrastructure. Um, we built out a massive GPU infrastructure in IBM Cloud, um, natively integrated into the fabric of IBM Cloud um, in a data center fully mm -hmm. dedicated for IBM research. We built out optimized you know, cost performance optimization, um, a very large environment for AI R&D. We also know that productivity isn't just about compute for all the reasons yep. we just talked about. So we have built out a stack that we ourselves use because it makes us move faster, right? And we've been, you know, working with customers around, okay, well, you also want to build and deploy <laughs> AI. Yep. Um, and, you know, they have different environments that we might have. Um, so we've been working with them on helping them adopt the same sort of directions for their own R&D needs. The thing that impressed me when we were talking earlier is that normally when we speak about companies that are providing solutions, especially if they're a cloud provider or a hybrid cloud provider, whether it's you know, on-prem, off-prem, mix, is they, they want the best product possible for their system. Now, I'm not saying <laughs> IBM is any different, but you are saying the way that you're designing your full stack solution, for lack of a better phrase, is that you can port it to any cloud environment, anything that the customer wants. That's right. This sort of concept of hyper cloud, which I think is, <laughs> is, is, is slowly you know, snowballing down a hill of how important that is. Yeah, well, we're really leaning into hybrid cloud as a company, right? Yeah. So hybrid cloud is really about you, you go to the environments that work for you, for the different use cases you have. Maybe you need to be on-prem for some reasons, yep. for some workloads. Go and be productive in that environment. You can take the exact same stack, running on OpenShift, port it into that environment. You can bring that same stack into our cloud. You could bring that same stack into other clouds. So really leaning into hybrid cloud. But again, we are also investing in infrastructure. So you know, last week, um, you know, you you learned about our yep. our AIU chip, right? Yep. IBM IBM's AIU chip. So in, innovating from the hardware through the systems, infrastructure deployed in a cloud environment, optimizing all the way up to the end user experience. Um, you can just do things uh, that you can't do when you're only focused on one part of that story. But again, you can take any part of it, right? You can decide, you know, I want to take the hybrid cloud stack and run it somewhere else. You could decide you want to be on-prem. So in this interlude, I have very special. IBM just announced this. Talia, what's this? That's our new AIU chip. It's an AI-specific uh, SOC focused on AI compute. So wait, IBM makes AI chips now? We do. Um, Clearly, you have one in your hand. Uh, I will also reiterate, we're from the research division, right? Yep. So we just, we just shared last week um, the news that we've been working on this for a while. We've had the AI Hardware Center, which has been around 
um, you know, in New York State for some number of years. It's on, you know, very public. We've been developing AI cores uh, focused yeah. really on optimizing low precision compute, uh, AI specific compute. And um, we also had an announcement earlier, right, around the existence of one of these cores on the new Z16 Telem chip. Hi, my name is Christian Jacoby. I'm the chief architect for Z Processor Design. And today, I'm introducing the IBM Telem chip. Telem is the next generation processor for IBM Z and Linux One systems. So the notion of us uh, being in the business of AI compute is not new. Uh, what is new is the fact that we've really now integrated all this together into a, a 32 core um, AI specific accelerator. So what exactly am I holding here? <laughs> it's a PCIe card, right? And, and mounted on that card is one of our chips. And um, it's coming online, bringing it up now. Um, you know, really excited about some of the potential applications. We're going to have a separate video on this, so stay tuned on the channel. Right, is that right? Uh, you've got a lot of financial clients, I know that things have to be on-prem for it to be secure in that, in that way. There are use cases like that. On the other hand, we also have a financial services cloud play, <laughs> yeah, right? So, sure. so we are seeing you know, cloud in general, cloud technologies, whether they be infrastructure platform and cloud native yeah. development methodologies and models like serverless computing, right? Those are getting adopted in more and more use cases. And really what we're seeing here is the opportunity to bring a lot of those value propositions into the world of AI and HPC. And, and this is how IBM makes money, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you talk about the new elements you're bringing online to help with the issue of networking? I mean, earlier you showed me a presentation about major leaps in performance. You're being able to get your GPU cluster up to 90% <laughs> utilization by only using standard Ethernet, not InfiniBand. You know, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah, so that goes back to the full stack, right? That really goes back to full stack. So, We've assembled a team in the research division with people of all kinds of backgrounds, infrastructure people, yep. like Kubernetes people, AI people, people who are you know, leading projects in PyTorch and right, right? Bringing everybody together and saying, we want to help our own community move faster. And by extension, all of our partners yep. and customers, right? But really, it's about moving faster. And for a lot of the you know, training we do, for example, because people think of that as, you know, it is a very time intensive step. So how do we actually run distributed training jobs with millions, you know, billions of parameters? Some of these models are billions of parameters. How do we do that in an efficient way? How do we run that over a standard Ethernet-based system, right? Because you know, it's not trivial to just kind of operate an InfiniBand network in a cloud environment, right? We want to bring the flexibility of a cloud with the performance of an HPC system. So really, that was about you know, what can we do in the infrastructure itself. So there was a series of optimizations we did in the infrastructure itself. And then how do we enable you know, the application to exploit all of the available yeah. network uh, performance? And that means exposing, for example, the networking constructs into OpenShift. We built a multi-NIC um, uh, CNI operator right. uh, for OpenShift, um, working with you know, members of you know, various communities to exploit better communication handling, right? So how do we send smaller messages and distribute the communication yeah. over, over the network? So again, it was really going across the stack and saying, what do we need to bring together across the stack to enable, yeah, 90 plus percent utilization yeah. of a standard Ethernet, you know, of GPUs, which yeah. means over a standard Ethernet network. So we're able to keep the GPUs busy for those massive models for 90% of the time, which is huge. So, I mean, um, for anybody who's not familiar, one of the biggest problems with AI training is this concept of uh, an all reduce, right. where you require all, all your GPUs essentially to solely synchronize uh, on one data value or you know, bringing everything together just to do one operation. Uh, you, you guys are telling me you're able to do that asynchronously. That's why you. you yeah, that thanks to community innovations, right? Yeah. Thanks to the innovations happening out there in the community, right? So being able to pull those innovations in, package them up, and mm -hmm. run them, right? That's the, the beauty of you know containerizing yeah. our stack, and then being able to to kind of run it in any environment. Um, run, running IBM, running Amazon, running Azure. Yeah. You know, all these companies that you can't mention on a. <laughs> <laughs> but each environment, each one of those environments has different networking constructs. So how yeah. do we simplify that for the end user? As you move around from your, your on-prem environment into yeah. our cloud, into some other cloud, how do we make it so that you don't have to be an infrastructure expert and you don't yeah. have to figure out how to exploit those different networking constructs, but just kind of package them up for you, handle well, them automatically in OpenShift. Or when you're on a cloud and you don't know the infrastructure because you've just been assigned a ran three random virtual <laughs> machines in a data center, right? So 
But each cloud, um, you know, is you're you're going to be able to learn something yeah. right, about th those environments, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, taking some of the things we typically would have relied on a system administrator to do in an HPC environment taking those same things that we've historically relied on a system administrator to do, but now package them up and have them automatically handled in OpenShift. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, we, we were talking earlier, so I'm involved in like a HPC community and they've got so many legacy ideas about how to manage <laughs> users, how to manage software, how to manage storage. Yeah. You, you either get the software package that the, that the system supports <laughs> or you don't get to use it, right? And there are problems with that. Yeah, there's lots. There's lots of problems. Support for the right libraries. There's um, there's issues around like not having enough observability and visibility into the state of your system. There's yeah. all there's all kinds of issues there. And uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say that clouds and hybrid cloud. I'm not going to say everything's perfect yet. But really, the vision of where we're going is to provide a lot of those mm. optimizations kind of automatically in the platform, and allow the user to focus on the AI. Not yeah. on all the things they have to do to set up the infrastructure for them to be productive. It's it's in in the same way with CPU you can compute. We're essentially abstracting everything away through libraries, so the coder doesn't have to know what's underlying. We're moving that way both in terms of cloud infrastructure and machine learning, but yeah. it's a slow. It, despite how fast the industry <laughs> is going, it's a slow process. But there is a roadmap to get there. Excellent. Thank you, Talia, for your time. Yeah, know, my pleasure. I know it's short and. Uh, if you want to find out more about foundational models and full stack, check the links below. Thank you. Thanks.